Hi, hello everyone. My name is Binga and you're welcome once again to Power User for Microsoft Excel tutorial. Um, today we'll be also talking about data validation, but we're taking it as much higher than we did the last time. Today we'll be treating specifically dependent data validation. Now what that means essentially is that data validation is applied on a series of cells based on um, the values of maybe a preceding or a neighboring field, essentially. What that means here, given the scenario that we have with Shipmakers International, is that Shipmakers International has is made up of three departments, admin, finance, and marketing. Now, each of those departments, as you would notice, on the right-hand corner of our worksheet, they have separate units under them. As you can see with the admin, you have MD's office unit, you have supplies, you, know, you have salaries units, and also you see for finance, they have, they have their own individual units, also for marketing as well. So what we'd like to do is create data validation within our units field, back on our database, our units field, where for admin, the drop down would only reflect the units which are applicable under admin and the same will happen for finance and for marketing. Now to do that is pretty simple but the first step actually is naming the cells. I believe we're all familiar with naming ranges so I won't spend too much time on that. So I've highlighted the ranges I would like to have named and I go to the name box on the um, left upper part of my Excel worksheet and I type the name of the department in the exact same words. That's the key to it. You must type them the exact same way. Do the same for finance. And I'll do the same for adverts and sales, which are departments on the marketing. Now we've done that. Then we select the very first record, that's units, under the very first record, and we go to our data tab, select that. Now under data tools, we select data validation as we did previously. And then we select here, drop down, select data validation, and then the familiar box comes up. Now under our valuation criteria, under allow, we go there and we select as we did before list, and then, but the source instead of choosing a source, a specific location on the worksheet, what we'll do is we'll use an interesting function called indirect. Indirect bracket open, and then we go on to select um, the department, and now we can see the signs of absolute reference in the dollar signs before the D and before the 5. What we'll do is we'll remove the dollar sign before the 5 and we click OK. Now to confirm that we're actually correct, we click on the drop down and we see that under admin we have MD's office supplies salary which is actually what we want. So what I'll do right now is I'll apply this formatting to all the cells where applicable. And then scroll back up to see. So we see that under admin, if we click on the drop down box, we'll find MD's office. So let's assume Yara Dwabaka works at the MD's office. We click on that. And then we see that Wogu Adamu in finance department is probably one of three. I have budget audit or accounts. Yes, and interestingly, we actually have that. So it's under audit. And then marketing, we'll be, we'll be sure to see advert and sales as our options, and then we can select accordingly. So in a nutshell, that's um, how dependent data validation works. It's an important skill to have, and it's one thing that would help put anyone on their path of becoming power, true power users of Excel. Thank you very much for allowing me to give this tutorial. Have a good day.